I think next we want to talk about the uh, new trailer for The Electric State. This is that $320 million movie that we mentioned earlier. Um, directed, million. directed by the Bruce Brothers uh, and written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, who have written everything that the Rooster Brothers have directed since uh, Winter Soldier. And will um, also be, uh, at, at least um, one of those is working on the new Avengers movies. Yeah, yeah. They are also doing, yeah, the, the two new Avengers movies. Uh, the score is also composed by the same uh, Alan Silvestri who did Infinity War and Endgame. So you literally have the trio reunited from Infinity War and Endgame for this movie for Netflix. Well, can you... You know, yeah, but well, I'll, can you I'll call give it a trio. You a, it's like a, it's like a one, one, two, three, four, five, a, a like a, a quintet. <laughs> a quintet. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Two partners. Uh, yeah, two sets of two of partners, and then a, a composer. Yeah, but then uh, this this has an insane cast list. Uh, so you have Millie Robbie Brown, Chris Pratt, Kihai Kwan, Stanley Tucci, Jean Carlo Esposito, Brian Cox, Jenny Slate, Anthony Mackie, Billy Bob Thornton, Jason Alexander, Alan Tudyk, and Woody Harrelson. Um, probably why it costs 320 million to get all those actors. And, um, yeah, it's set in this alternate nineties reality where, uh, robots. Is that supposed existed. to be the nineties? It is supposed is to be the nineties. Yeah. Which I think is why we get this very like cartoony robot, uh, look. Okay. Um, that's at least that's my, my take on it. But basically, um, the the movie follows yeah this world that had a a robot kind of revolution or war where like the humans took down the robots they lost their free will humans for some reason got disconnected from each other and started wearing these devices that like do everything in this virtual world maybe that's kind of what i'm gathering and um the main character millie bobby brown apparently in the war lost her brother but this robot knows about her brother and knows i guess how to help and uh her and and some robots and chris pratt go and and try and save her brother in this in this world that is like weirdly uh sad but also like goofy it's it's a very like interesting vibe yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's a very like if because if you it, feel like these robots are slaves now but then they're also like really goofy looking you know yeah yeah, yeah i i i'd question who designed the robots it's like mm. yeah yeah were you were you were, were were we trying to like were you trying to have like a i don't know uh like um, we're trying to laugh at the robots as they as they help us i mean right. they got these big ass goofy <laughs> circle heads yeah yeah uh, and, and like they they look like something out of a cartoon it's not even, and I'm not even trying to slight like what I'm like what I'm about to mention, but like, like with Jean Carl Esposito's like a uh, robot, oh, like God, it it, so it, it almost felt like like a Fallout like kind of robot yes, to me. It did. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, but it also is giving uh like Toby uh whatever the the Toby Jones whoever played the German like doctor uh in winter soldier well he was the, oh okay who well he was the like the shorter german doctor in captain america the first movie and then he right, got right. uploaded into the computer in the second yeah like yeah, he yeah. kind of had that vibe too sure sure yeah i get that um yeah i don't know it's it's uh it's not the vibe i would have gone for i think what like with this kind of a movie i think it would have been a lot smarter to go like in a creator kind of type route. Like I know you didn't love the creator, but I think like well, I the liked... vibes and the world that was built there yeah. was really cool. And yeah. I think that would have served this style of movie better. Um, also, I feel like for some reason that $80 million creator movie like looks better than this $320 million electric state. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where did the budget go? Like, it's not like the robots look amazing either. They well, just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, well, f first off, I do think that this movie will have infinitely more CGI and sure, that sure. than uh, the creator because the creator was a, was a lot more like shot on location, put the robots in there, right? 
Uh, and there was there was a lot less robots, and there was a lot less of uh, yeah, like think, effects needed. So right. like they they worked well with their budget. But I agree. Yeah. Like yes, that movie looked infinitely better than this. I don't. I also don't want to shit on this movie because I do. I'm not like I kind of like the the goofiness uh, and, yeah. and the dystopia. At first glance, I'm like it. I could maybe get behind it. I just need to watch it because like at the end where like the robots are like tossing microwaves or whatever the fuck, like ovens mm. at, and like it kind of made me laugh a little bit. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little nervous that it's like, it's like this idea seems a little kooky. Um, yeah. A little, like I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why the robots are so goofy and, Giving they, like who's, they have who's, very expressive personalities. Yeah, and, yeah. But you're which like, say. well, who's the? Is it who's the 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 boy like the the you know that like the restaurant that has the the little boy who's like with the burger in the real in our real world, the little boy, <laughs> like Big Burger or something. I don't. You know I have no. About? I have no idea. Like one of the robot that like knows. Where Millie Bobby Brown's brother is was giving this the the burger boy with the with the woofy the swirl hair <laughs> okay. restaurant. We'll look it up. Uh, I'll show yeah, it to you. Yeah, you'll have you'll have to show me. Yeah. But it, it it was it was giving this weird retro like vibe, like yeah, animated I, I do vibe hope, that I don't. Yeah, but they go more into that like retro '90s vibe. I think that's maybe like because you were you didn't even know. Like I, I mentioned, like you didn't even realize that that was the '90s. It didn't, no, I had it, no idea. I would not. Right. Have, I would never have known. But I do kind of like I, the thing that I'm curious about is it. The robots do give a bit of. I would be curious to know what the what the world looked like before that because the robots are giving a bit of a optimistic sci-fi uh kind of design right that you would see in in the 1950s and 40s sure. um, where sure. every like like technology was supposed to be amazing and great and you had all right. these really uh unique looking round uh and and accentuated robots or maybe they were they were some of them are more, uh, you know, like boxy, uh, but like, yeah. but like infrastructure was like all curved and big and circular right. and chrome. And, and there is like a lightness and a funness and, and obviously something in this world did not go great. And, and we're kind of, I do kind of enjoy the fusing of like this older, potentially I'm just making assumptions like older, yeah positive uh optimistic outlook on technology and yeah. like and and, and kind of lighthearted design mixed with what a like lot a of grim future yeah know? what yeah. which has been the kind of like what science fiction has gravitated towards in right. in the past couple decades um, for sure which i do enjoy uh i don't i can't say that this story uh, yeah, is, like is, is interesting. I have to find my brother, and Chris Pratt's yeah. playing the same character he plays in, in every, every movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. I and I love Chris Pratt, um, but I I can't say I've loved him in anything outside of Guardians of the Galaxy. So um, I did enjoy him in the first Jurassic World movie because at I that time it was that. it was a little novel with him being like. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, I mean, it was a little yeah, novel. like I was he was like, definitely oh, better in that one than in the other two, for sure. I wonder what um, else I I like. I mean, well, he was. You, do you like him was, in Parks and Rec? I like him in Parks and Rec. I like the clips that I've. I've never really watched the show, but I like the clips that I've seen of him in. Um, you know, and he didn't do he didn't do a bad job as either Mario or Emmett in Lego Movie. I like him as Emmett. Like, yeah, I love him as Emmett. Yeah, yeah, he's but definitely better a as actor. You're right. He's definitely better as as Emmett than Mario. Um, I like him as the douchebag in uh, in Wanted. You're right. You're right. I did like him in that. But yeah, that's before he broke out at all. That's funny. Um. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I I liked him in Thor: Love and Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Guardians of Galaxy. I'm, I'm, know, kidding, you know, I'm yeah, kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> uh, 
I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't have high hopes, incredibly high hopes because like, but the, the only thing I've liked the Billy budget. Bobby Brown in is, is Stranger Things too. But yeah, I, I, you know, and yeah, I agree. The budget is insane. I, it's not getting a theatrical release. Um, so I don't understand how Netflix is making their money on this because well, it's not like, but it's not like they're ga- they're going to gain like a flood of new subscribers because of this movie. Right. And you that's, know? that I feel like is like, you kind of saw it with the beginning of the trailer from the directors of Avengers Endgame and infinity war and the gray yeah. man. And I was like the gray man, nobody <laughs> saw that movie. I mean, yeah. maybe they did, yeah. but like, I don't hear anybody talk about the gray man, which by the way, $200 million budget. They just we love throwing over. money at the Russo brothers, to be honest. I mean, like <laughs> the Russo brothers, God bless them yeah. because they did make some incredible movies for the MCU. They have. They have. I've not been making great stuff since then. And I know that net, like Netflix is absolutely banking on the fact that if we say, oh, oh my God, this is the guys that made Endgame. This is the guys that made Infinity War. Like, they're hoping yeah, they'll get people in, right? Right. But it's why they it's why they gave all that money to Zack Snyder too, you know? Right. And I I I don't know the numbers, but I I don't think it. Maybe maybe it did well for them. I don't know. Maybe it got their subscriber. I think they up, are trying but... to make a great man too, to be honest. But I don't know if that's even going to happen now since the Wizard Brothers are making Avengers. So. I don't know. But like a three hundred and twenty million. Yeah. I mean. Only on, and maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's part of the appeal. They're like, because only on Netflix could could you make a three hundred and twenty million dollar movie, like the budget alone to make it, and I just, and to not yeah. have a theatrical release. Like we know that Netflix is still like the top, uh, you know the the top streamer, but I know for a fact that they are. Billions like they're, of dollars in debt. Right. And, and they, I mean, and these decisions keep losing the money. Like I don't, and, and like, like it's, it's been a theme recently, you know, of, of like the, you know, Greta Gerwig recently was like having concerns that her movie, like Chronicles of Narnia isn't going to be a theatrical release. And like the, the glass onion movie didn't. And Daniel Craig was upset about that. And, and obviously I think Rebel Moon would have done better if it had a theatrical release. I don't think it would have done a lot better. <laughs> I don't think it would have done but, a lot better, but, but I think it, like, it would have at least gained them some money and not been this like huge pit that they, they made for themselves. Yeah. I mean, like we, we have seen, especially with like Deadpool and Wolverine, we have seen that you, if you put a movie out in the theaters, that's exciting. It's yeah. exciting, first of right. all. But secondly, yes, you're 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 paying us a a, a a a a percentage of of the cost to get it out there and to and to pay the movie theaters to to play it, right? But what is the harm? In, and maybe it's because they need to show growth in subscriptions. But I would argue that whenever, like when Top Gun Maverick went over to Paramount Plus. It was a fucking event because everyone was like, oh my God, it's on Paramount right. Plus. I got to get Paramount Plus. What is the harm? And even doing what, like, even though Glass Onion 2 should have been out longer and Deadline said it could have potentially made $600 million if you gave right. it a full theatrical release, you could you could get more subscribers when you market it and it's a great movie. Hopefully right. it's a great, the, like, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. The thing, it has to be a great movie, but like Andy go, like you're still going to make more money than you are just marketing. Like get, go on Netflix. You can watch the Russo brothers when all you're doing is showing it, like is running a trailer and you, when Netflix doesn't run ads, I never see fucking ads. For well, unless you have on, the ad tier. Right. But oh yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. But, but still, like, yeah. Who, right. who, like you have to be on Netflix to see those ads. Like yeah, you, yeah. you're not going to see it on YouTube and and on uh, agreed, agreed. TV, yeah. like yeah. maybe, maybe, but I, I really highly. I mean, Rebel it. Moon was was the one of the first that I saw ads for, um, but like I, I, yeah, like to your point, I there's there's no reason. I mean, like, and it's a model that has worked and will work, which is you release a movie in theaters and maybe you market that you're like this movie Limited. will well, yeah well, well no but like this movie will be you know in theaters and then you know like <laughs> six months later it will come to our streaming service exclusively 
And and that like you can you can tell that to everyone as the movie's releasing. Everyone gets the you know gets the hype. They think think it's think it's a great movie. And then everyone's like, oh, let's let's go and like watch it on our streaming service yes. because it's already gained all this hype. Yeah, you know, like I it 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 makes sense. And, it, and I don't understand why they're money. shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, I exactly. I just feel like it's this this uh, mindset that they have. It's like we have to. We have to define ourselves as like, no, we don't need movie theaters. We can do it all ourselves. Which is just so, yeah, not the case. We're going like, to have people flock to us to see this yeah. movie because they have they, 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 they have the option to see so much more things for their one month of subscription plus this movie if that's what they came right, for. But like for the most part, like I feel like people have gotten like like the, the streaming services have gotten their... Like the the amount of subscribers they've they've gotten, like for the most part, that's what they've got. Like I don't yeah, I don't know you, if you there's... can't get that much more. That's why they're cracking right. down on passwords, right? So that they can have get people more. make their own accounts. Right. Exactly, exactly. So it's gonna crash yeah, at a certain. I, point. I, I wouldn't be surprised if within ten years they will not be making like they'll still make movies, but they will apply the business model that we subscribe or we you know suggested. They won't be like there will not be exclusive movies for streaming services in ten years. At least I don't think there will be. Maybe like I I do I think that there will be there will still be some. I mean, not uh, unless you make you, them for like when, fifty million or less. You know. Well, that's what I'm saying because like when you look at like HBO, like HBO, like when Dune Two was like coming to streaming services, everyone was like, oh, like getting excited. But yeah. then you have like there's this. HBO Max original like Salem's Lot and HBO Max original uh, other horror movie that just dropped. Yeah. And and even though it's HBO and it's Max, like I'm like, eh, you know, it's yeah. a straight. It's a I did hear movie. though that like Salem's Lot wasn't great and that it right. would have been really enjoyable in a theater like with a bunch of people. But Pro- I mean, that's usually how yeah. horror movies go. You know, it's right. more enjoyable right. in the theater. Um, but like I think you can still make those movies that are just streaming based like here and there, but like your bread and butter is like the, the theatrical movies. Be- yeah. And and then you eventually drive those people to be like, well, they have this movie that I saw in the theater and I really liked, and they have this movie that I saw and they have this right. catalog and they build it up. And exactly. But Netflix doesn't want to do that. And, no. and no. they also have, their their other problem is that they need to stop making such garbage streaming movies all the time that nobody ever hears about. Like uh, Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a single person who saw or talked about that. Like I wanted to forget about it as soon as I saw the trailer. It was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I think I think things are 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 due for a breaking point soon, but um, especially with, I don't, I mean, who knows? Like if electric state isn't like incredibly well received, I, you know, that's a, that's a huge failure like for Netflix. So, I mean, it was a huge, yeah. Yeah. And great man was a huge failure. Right. It was a huge failure for like, uh, rebel, rebel moon, moon too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Who saw rebel moon too? I, I didn't. Right. I, I, yeah. I will. I don't think I'll ever watch that movie. So even though the the concept for this movie is intriguing, I'm not the most excited to be honest. But I will check it out. Yeah, I mean it's it's free for us. Uh, I mean in a way, right? Yeah, in a way, so, 